you might come up and share a story or two, we'll see. Um, so yeah, so let's just, how we got started. So like Ben said, our, we have a pretty good baseball team, not to brag, but they are D Division One CIF. So they play some of the best teams in the nation if they make it to the playoffs. And last year made it to the playoffs and all these games, I kept hearing about them and I was like, well, what about, how can we live stream these? How can we do play-by-play? -play? How can we get all this stuff done? So I talked to my advisor, John Den, who's always very helpful. And he said, yeah, I mean, we used to do like a basketball game or two, but this software doesn't exist anymore. So we went online and we looked into a couple of things and we came across Memo Live and it was, the best thing, I'm going to explain a lot of that later. I'm going to go into a lot of different softwares, a lot of different ways you can do things. Um, so he said, I'm going to be out of town. I have to go to the make repair in San Francisco. I said, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll handle it. I'll, I'll get it all known. So we set up, we did half a baseball game, and then the feed cut out, and we were like, oh, well. But then the next game was game number two. Picture of it right here. I showed a couple clips from it. It was one of the most, it was, it was probably the greatest game of any sport or that sport I've seen. They were down 5-1 and this guy came up to bat every clean he was their catcher and he hit a grand slam to tie the game and they walked it off in extra innings and being there was magical and that's 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 how we started and only from there we've only grown. We've done hit this the next slide. I'm just point at you. There's the next slide. Basketball, football, oh that's volleyball, volleyball, basketball, water polo and yeah and next we are we're, and now we're back in the baseball season. So it's a lot of cool things. We got these cool Fox Sports S graphics, spent a lot of time on those, and I'll actually show you guys how to make things like that, or if you just want to buy them from us, like we Ben set up a shop, but for, for those lazy people out there, I understand. Um, so yeah, that's how we started. What's next? How can you use live streaming? It's a very broad category. Live streaming is just what it sounds like. You stream some sort of video, whatever you want, <coughs> on the internet. So it's not just sports. How about, how about for, for a media monster, someone can tell me something that you like. For the yellow media monster. These are, these are things that our advisor gives out whenever you do something good in the program. So I'm going to be giving these out all throughout the session. So yeah, just go ahead and raise your hand. Yeah, what's something you like? Go for it or graduation. Graduation. We, we do graduation. We don't do it through email live. We do it through live stream. but. Yeah, that's a great one. If I hit anyone, I apologize. What's up with Video game? Yeah, Twitch is very popular. A lot of people live stream through Twitch. Um, like competitions, like different competitions, like science competitions, math competitions. Definitely. So, put up, put up well, some of the ones I came up with. There's a lot of things from sports, plays and talent shows, daily news broadcasts, community events, anything you want. You can do it all with all the equipment we're going to show you today and Nemo Live. So yeah, what's next? We got a lot of, how can you guys get started? This is why you came here, to learn how you can live stream sports or anything else to, to your school. So first thing you got to do is you got to film. It's, it's, I don't like that word film because when you're in live stream, a lot of it's non-linear editing. So at STN, you film all your stuff, you go to the editing bay, you edit it all, and it's all awesome. <coughs> But live streaming is not like that. Live streaming, you've got to be pushing things as it goes because people are watching it live and there's a lot of things we am showing you do save them on demand and you can get those videos later, but you're not going to want to go back and edit them. You want to move on to the next thing. So the camera is going to go into add, adding cuts, graphics, and titles, like I said, and then that's just going to go to the internet. So those are the three basic steps, really, it. So the next thing you're going to do is you've got to pick where you want to stream from. So there's a lot of different streaming services and you'll definitely recognize a few of the ones I'm going to show you. I'm just going to go over like four of them really quick. There's tons of them out there and you just got to figure out what is best tailored for you. So the first thing we've got is YouTube and YouTube, you all know what YouTube is. If you don't, you're living under a rock and I don't know why you're at a media convention, but, <laughs> but you all know YouTube. YouTube has a pretty good live streaming system. It's free to stream. It's free for everybody to watch. And we initially started streaming everything to YouTube. And then California Interscholastic Federation, which is the people who run all of our sports, they said, uh, no, you can't do this. This is against the rules. And we were like, really? 
So then we're like, okay, so what do we do now? Their, their rules were you had to stream to your, your school's website or to, it, it couldn't be something public like YouTube. So I'm gonna repeat that later. You wanna really make sure you know the rules. Don't get in trouble because we did. <coughs> so after YouTube, we moved on to the next thing and that was the NFHS network. And the NFHS network, I'm hereby invited referring you guys all to the NFHS network. Um, it's pretty cool. It's basically, there's tons of school, schools use it with the school broadcast program. So you connect to the NFHS network, you have your own customer service rep, their customer service is impeccable. It's really one of the best I've ever seen. Nick, uh, not Nick, Ben could go on about it for days. I oh, love yeah. the customer service. Called them many times. <laughs> you, you call them, you email them at any time, they're, they're really helpful. And the NFHS network, it's just this huge platform for lots of sports. They allow you to embed stuff on your website if that's the route you want to take. The only, there's about two downsides to it, I would say, and that's your viewers have to pay a subscription fee to watch through the NFHS network. But the good thing about that is if you, it's like $10 a month is the minimum you can charge. And you'll get $5 for every $10 donated. So sometimes we just get these random checks in the mail for like 80 bucks and I'm like, awesome. We're, we're making money, I'm like I'm not even thinking about it. I'm just live streaming my stuff and going along and then all of a sudden some checks come in the mail. So that's a good way to fundraise for your program. And it's, it's a, they, they get rights to all CIF events. So if you're from California, do we have any California schools out here? You all right, and any uh, Nevada schools? Two, all right. You want one school? Yeah. So they have all the rights to CIF and a few in Nevada. So if you wanna, if you're from California, Nevada, that's the way to go because you can make sure everything is legal and you're doing the right thing. But you can also put stuff on your website with a streaming player like next slide, it's Vimeo Live or Sports Channel Media. So. Vimeo, Vimeo Live, you all know Vimeo, it's kind of like YouTube. It's a very big, um, big, big platform that a lot of schools who are at STN and all over use to live stream their stuff. It costs about $70 a month, so it's, we don't use it because we don't have that kind of money for our program, but, but it's, it's definitely a big platform. You can embed stuff, you can stream whatever quality you want, do whatever you want, and I don't know a lot about it, but I know that it's something that a lot of schools use, so I feel like I'd be remiss not mention it. But Sports Channel Media is a platform. Yeah, you question. Vimeo, don't, don't they own live stream now, or live stream bought Vimeo? They do. Vimeo did buy live stream, so it's, that's how you know they've kind of got a lock on what they're doing and know exactly. But Sports Channel Media, it's a smaller company. We just got in contact with them uh, recently. We're thinking of switching over to them because they allow a lot of cool stuff. So. It says on your um, on these sheets of paper, hopefully I don't forget anything, but you can color code your embed to match your website, and it's you can host it only on your website, so that way you can get through the CIF rules without, um, what's it called, without having to go through FHS and make your viewers pay, because that's, I mean, if you want to build a big viewer base, it's hard to do that when they're <laughs> each having to pay about $10 a month. So, sports channel media, I. It seems like a pretty cool company, and they have a lot of solutions like that make it super easy to stream. So I'm going to show you how you go through our computer and push graphics and do all this like high end stuff. But they will, they have a, you can buy like a 4K camera for like 100 bucks, mount, uh, clip it to your, clip it to a event, connect it to a power bank, and that'll basically, um, and then like hopefully you need some sort of internet, so a hotspot, and we'll, we'll get there, but. And that'll literally, like, you can set it up, and the guy I was on the phone with said, 90 seconds it takes me to set up a broadcast. I clip it on, I scan the QR codes, and all of a sudden we're streaming. But, so that's definitely an alternative. If you think all this stuff I'm gonna show you later is confusing, I personally learned it in a, just a matter of days. Nick did too. I don't think it's too hard. Um, it is a little bit pricey to set up. Um, Mimo Live is $200 a year at the lowest end, but, for what it does, I, I, I think it's a steal. Um, anyway, let's move on. Streaming services getting set up. So you pick your streaming service. Now you gotta get, what's the first thing, equipment? You gotta recruit your team, that's more important. You don't have anyone to man the cameras or run things. These are selfies we took at events. Selfies are a fun way to prove you were there and just have 
evidence of all these fun events you've streamed. So a couple people in the front row, you can see me and Nick there. I look pretty greasy in those photos. But anyway, get your homepage contacts, send them reminders, say, hey, are you still willing to do it? Because people are flaky sometimes, especially in high school. You want to make sure that people are committing to what they're going to do. And you want to be persistent and be excited because when you're excited, everyone else is going to be excited. You, you say, it's good. this is such a great game. It's a great matchup, rivalry matchup. I've been waiting all year for this, and people are going to be excited too. So you really just want to hype everything up and recruit your team. And then you've got to get jobs for your team. So the next slide, we're going to show you. These are the four main jobs you'll have at a live event if you do things the way we do it. And that's basically what I'm going to show you here today. So you need a technical head. You need some sort of cameraman. You need commentators. You don't need commentators. That's optional. But I have a lot of fun doing play-by-play. -play, um, and I'll give you guys a couple tips on that towards the end. And then there's remote controller. So the technical head's job is to run the laptop that's streaming out through uh, to wherever, wherever you're streaming out. Make sure everything runs smoothly. People are doing their jobs. He's connected with the cameraman. And there's a lot of different ways with Nemo Live that you can run cameras. And we'll get into that. Uh, a little bit later, but cameraman just capture the action of the game, get get footage, uh, just make sure people can see what's going on because that's really the most important thing. If people can't see the game, why are they watching your feet? And then remote controllers, basically with Mumo Live, you can set up a little remote on your phone or an iOS device, some sort of device, and that'll be able to control aspects of your presentation. So I'm going to show you all this in action in a little bit later. So don't don't get hung up on this, but you can also expand, um, go into it a little bit of depth. On the next slide, you'll see that you want to make sure everybody knows what's going on. So athletic directors, if you're doing an away game, even if it's a home game, you want to make sure everybody knows what's going on. They know where you're setting up because if you're blocking view or blocking scoreboards, that's, that's not what you want to do. And they probably won't let you live stream again. So you want to just abide by everybody's rules, email everybody. Know your location. You want to make sure it's not going to rain. It's, you're not going to run into any expected internet troubles. And internet is a very, very important thing with live streaming. We'll get into it in a minute. So, so you just want to make sure everybody knows what's going on, basically. Um, there's Michael Scott. And like I said, we got caught, unlike Prison Mike, by, um, <laughs> by CIF. They, they, they were like, stop streaming to YouTube. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. We're like, okay, okay. So we moved to the NFHS network and we've been doing that ever since. And they've, they've been a, a really awesome streaming platform. And uh, there's there's an angry email I got. Let's just get past that. I don't know why I decided <laughs> to put that on there. It was a late night last night. So equipment, let's just show it to you guys because picture, we, we have it all right here. Nick, you want to start with that? You want to do your equipment? And I'll, I'll just pull it out. All right. I don't know where it all is. But. All right, so let's start. Let's go from the computers to the cameras. So first of all, you need a computer, and really important, you need. Uh, so I would really recommend using a MacBook, and they're a lot easier to handle. Then you need certainly a power cable. We forgot that a couple of times, but Nemo Live has a lot of power. Then also tons of adapters, um, going from the USB C, giving you more. USB ports and then giving you HDMI ports and everything so you can stream out through the cameras and then we use microphones for, um, for, for commentating and then HDMI cables of course going from the cameras to the laptop. Um, also a hotspot of course, very important. You can't bring the ballot hotspot. Well, how did a second ago? And then, um, there we go. There's you guys. So yeah, here's the Mimo Live interface. Um, here are your sources. I'm going to get in the middle of it later, but I, I, I jumped the gun a bit. Yeah. I just wanted to show this is HDMI cable running to an HDMI adapter. This cost about $70, $80 on Amazon, but it does. It's very powerful. Takes the feed from the camera, puts it in the computer. Anyway, keep going. Nick. So then we, used, we always had, I think for football games, we always had two cameras. Like we always had two angles. One a wide angle and then like a close up a camera. And then we, um, yeah, we had that. And then we always had 
for like volleyball or uh, basketball, we have kind of sideline one that we just did with a phone. We put a phone on a tripod and then you could connect it with Nemo Live. And um, yeah, and that was, uh, that was very helpful. <laughs> um, and yeah, so you can, it's really easy. Nemo Live, you can just connect your phone, connect an iPad, connect pretty much anything and anything with a camera on it and you can stream it out. Yeah, um, microphone, really easy. Just literally plug it into the computer. It never gives us really any trouble. Hotspot for internet. We're going to talk about internet. I think that's like the next slide. Um, okay. Well, yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Here, here's Michael Scott again. I put up quite a few of these Michael Scott gifts in here. But... Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. So, when you run the camera through the HDMI, when you, if you do like an on camera shot, don't like to pick up crowd and stuff, will that go? The HDMI, yes. well. HDMI's video and audio, um, so it's that it's really a really good way to go. The only thing is it's um like like if you want to try to like connect HDMI cables, it's not gonna work too well. It's not meant for distance. Um SDI does better with distance, I think. That's just a different type of cable, but um yeah, HDMI has been really good. Anyway, this Michael Scott here, you're probably all wondering about that. Um, but you don't have to use one of these USB to HDMI adapters. This is just uh, one we found to work with the cameras we already had. Um, but you can also, if you have a cam a DSLR, some DSLRs for <coughs> the USB cable, any or even the FaceTime camera on your laptop, all those will can be inputs to Nemo Live. Uh, any video source can be an input. Yeah, and you, you can even use your phones wirelessly or wired. It's it, it's got so many different functionality to it. That's why we use it, and I'll show you that. But this Michael Scott did this. This is basically a 100% accurate representation of what I looked like when we were streaming football games. I think Nick can vouch. Um, just basically, don't freak out. Like, there's no reason to freak out. It, you guys are high schoolers. Nothing's gonna go go according to plan. Nothing's gonna be perfect, and that's good. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more later. But just just don't don't look like this when you when you're live streaming stuff, even if. Yeah. Jacob and Nick forget laptops, don't look like this. <laughs> or iPads. Or, or anything. Anyway. Talking about internet. Then you want to about internet? Sure. Internet so, um, really it depends uh, where you're going to be. That's why it's really important to research where you're going to be streaming from. Uh, uh, it, like Our internet was super stable when we were in our school. We're lucky enough to have uh, Ethernet ports in all the classrooms and steady and stable Wi-Fi at our pool and in our gym. Uh, this isn't the same necessarily for the baseball field, but if you have some nice long uh, Cat5 Plus or uh, Cat5 or higher Ethernet cables that you can run from Ethernet, the distance isn't as much of a problem as it is for HDMI. You can really, like, we, I've done four Ethernet cables with splitters and it still worked. So, like, Ethernet's the best. And then if you have also, if you have pretty stable Wi Fi at your school, that's all, that also should be fine. If you're in your gym or at your uh, at your pool, uh, Wi-Fi will work just as well if you have if your internet speed is fast enough. Um, we also have a jet, uh, our teacher's jetpack. Um, it's just from he got it from Verizon. It it just uses some of his mobile data, um, but uh, it's all, that's also a pretty way to go. But we can also use your uh, if your phone has a hotspot. Um, really, there's a lot of different ways you can get internet. You really only need about five megabits per second of download slash upload speed to hold a stable 720p uh, uh, YouTube stream. Yeah. The most important thing is just test it ahead of time. Make sure it can do what you want it to do because you don't want to get there and all of a sudden everything crashes. Um, that's, a, that's another nice thing about NFHS too. They have a four minute buffer. You can change this buffer to be less, but we keep it at four, uh, four minute buffer. So it adds four minutes of delay from when you start streaming. Uh, to what's being pushed to your viewers, so that if your internet cuts out, you have four minutes to fix it before your viewers notice a drop in connection. All right, yeah, and then there's, I got, I got recommended from the Sports Channel Media guy, and if, if you want more on that company, he, he said um, he's happy to have me give you his contact information, but um, there's these two companies, and they'll give you unlimited data on Hotspot for $60 a month, which sounds like a lot, but say you're doing two events a week, that's like eight events a month, and then if it's to the AFHS network, you're making five dollars per per monthly uh, viewer. So I mean, it, it's all about budgeting. 
however you can fit it in your budget. But if you if you want to do away games, then like baseball, <coughs> a lot of the fields are secluded and about so, softball. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, you just, yeah, hot spots are a really good way to go because you can bring them wherever you go and you'll, you'll have it. But talk yeah. to the school you're going to first because there's a good chance that they'll have either ethernet accessible that you can plug into so you can bring your own ethernet cables or they'll have some kind of Wi-Fi where you're gonna be streaming from. And also like some schools don't even have a stable, uh, uh, sorry, cellular data connection. Um, so there's maps on, there's maps on the internet that you can look to see if there's gonna be a stable cellular connection. So now, Mimo Live, I talked a lot about it already, but I'm going to talk even more. Their motto is the multi-in, multi-out live video engine. I don't really know what that means. The way I think of it is it's like, it's portable, it's fast, and it, like, it does what we need, it, we need it to do. Um, this kid is from Germany, and I literally like, like, like are you a media kid? I don't know. Not that much. Like, I literally just like threw him into this software. I was like, here's how you do this, here's how you do this. Um, and it basically does these three things. You give it a library of sources, and I'm just gonna pull it up here. Here are your sources. So basically we've got the HDMI feed, which is from the camera. You can see that right here um, under, so I have a video, so, so there's three different components to it. Don't get overwhelmed by it, because I'm trying to get, kind of getting overwhelmed explaining it, but once you learn each individual thing, so you import your sources, that's, on the left hand side. So you've got your video camera and then your audio feeds and a lot of times they can go together. The only uh, thing is when you have a video switcher that doesn't uh, include the audio. So yeah. we'll do that. And then you can also put in pictures, lower thirds, logos, graphics, really anything you want, um, and, and, but it's just any sort of media you're putting in, that's where it goes. So you upload that to the sources, which is the little plus sign, all these different things you can do. I mean, you've done all of them because it's just a lot. Um, and then you make layers. So there's so many different layers and like they're, they're really, really helpful. So for example, let's we'll go to the bottom. Here's the video switcher layer. It allows you to put in nine videos and literally change them with the click of a button. So, so one of the one of my favorite things about this is the shortcuts. So let's say, so I have a, a movie. I think I like the movie I put in there. There we go. So I have one for cut one and two for cut two. So I literally hit one, and there's our football video, the game winning kick. But like I said, the video switcher layer doesn't handle audio, so. All you would have to do is make an audio only layer, and this just, we don't have any audio connected there. So that's why you chose. But, but yeah, you, and then you literally hit here, just to go back here. Where are these DC balls? So that's, that's, for, that's from the that's from browser. But anyway. So that's, that's the layer panel. There's a whole bunch of really cool things you can do with it. Instant replay is one I've been having a lot of fun with lately because it literally, it takes the last 10 seconds and you hit stop and then you, it just plays it again as many times as you want. And um, it's really good. And like I said, there's these things called remote control. So you click this button and here it is. So this literally will control the scorebook down here. And this can be put on an iPad with the Mimo remote app. It can be put in the uh, onto another laptop. You can do anything you want with these remote. So, for example, let's say DP scores three. You just press the plus three, start the clock, do whatever you want with it. Um, and you can make them. For example, I have three control surfaces right now. One to control the bottom thing. One to switch the cameras. So cut two, cut one. And it's broken apparently. I didn't use that one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Mimo Live, and then here's basically the most important thing, it's the output monitor, and that's on the right hand side. I'll drag this up. Let's just cut back to the game winning kick. So here, basically the reason it stopped is because yeah, it's on play one specifically. So that loop should solve our problem. Here we go. So Output destination, file recording. 
So it literally, now it's just saving to my desktop. And it's gonna keep saving until it runs out of space. Live streaming, it gives you the opportunity to connect your YouTube account, to connect your Facebook account, even Twitch and Periscope. I haven't even tried those yet, but, or if it's like anything else, that's where your custom RTMP server comes in handy. So NFHS, they give you an ingest server. This is what it looks like. And then they're gonna give you a long string of numbers. And that's all, that's just the nitty gritty, but literally that was my stream key, start streaming, and then all of a sudden your output station picks up. So it's like an all-in-one software, which has just been so kind to us and has saved me so much trouble because there's so many cool things to do. And then the only thing that's a little bit weird about it is like that score bug at the bottom. Like I had to build that like piece by piece. So if you look, here's the, <coughs> the number that changes, <coughs> how many yards there is to go. Anyway, it's just, there's a lot of stuff on it. I actually wrote an article on it if you want to know more, if it seems interesting to you, but hopefully you understand the general overview of it. And if you don't, you can read my article on it or they've got tons of cool forums. A lot of people are using it, so yeah. And then with the remote controls, the easiest thing to do is if, you're, if you have any iPad, um, it doesn't really, the remote control doesn't really fit very well on a phone. Um, but if you have an iPad, you just open the browser, uh, connect it to whatever the same Wi-Fi network is that the computer is connected to. Uh, it's through local network, so it doesn't have to go through the internet. It just connects directly to the computer. So like I said, and there's you a can switch sources and stuff. whole bunch of sources you can do. HDMI, SDI, uh, mini USB, any sort of connection. It just will figure out, even lightning. There's even ways to just connect your phone with an app and do lightning. Um, output destinations, you do Facebook. You can even have it, if you if any, does anyone know what NDI is? It's, I don't even know what it is that well, but it's it's a it's a wireless like cloud thing. <laughs> and, and it's it's just it's it's how um it's like a communication between uh, like a live streaming machine and then like a laptop. So sometimes we'll do live interviews at our school during our morning show. We'll hit the NDI button goes up and then all of a sudden the laptop, I mean the, the live stream machine can pick it up. So NDI, save with your computer. And so now we're gonna do an emo call. Let me tell my friend Michael that I'm ready for him. We're gonna call him and interview him from Santa Barbara, California. Yeah? All right. So basically Mimo Live, it gives you a stream key. So right here, here's the Mimo call ID, Warm-Hearted Salmon Mandra. They give you the weirdest names. I don't know why. You can't make your own. You just gotta deal with what it gives you. <coughs> then I'm gonna add our Mimo call layer. M. Or it'll be a placer one. We just literally get a placer. And then we put in the placer thing, Mimo call. It's gonna, it, we're waiting for him right now. Okay. No, that was, that was from when it froze from last time after we disconnected, but he needs the code again. So copy and paste that to him. We should be on the phone with him any second now. And it's a really cool, it's basically FaceTime, but it's within this software, you can do it from a computer, you can do it from a phone uh, with this app called Mimo Live Recorder, and I'll show you that in a minute at all, it, it, it lets you just connect wirelessly from anywhere around the world so you can use it as like a sideline camera or you can use it uh, to interview people from wherever you want. So, waiting for a partner. Just call, so he's coming in any second. Partner, partner. So that, that was, that's his beautiful face. We should see him live in just a second. <coughs> There we go, I see him. So let's make him live. There he is. Michael is here. All we gotta do now, we can't hear him, but we're seeing the levels. So you, uh, no, no, don't do that, because it's gonna blast in just a second. You wanna add the NDI audio off. Cause that's important. So there's beautiful Santa Barbara, California. That's where we're from. 
Let me just. So right now you can't see me, and that's because it's just a call. It's yeah. But I'll, I'll text him some questions. So uh, can you introduce yourself? Can one of you slowly show us how to take off the the sports title? Yeah, no problem. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not what I meant to do. Do you think um, my name is Michael Narciso. I am a 12th grader at Hope Hope High School. I'm part of the DP youth. And yeah, I'm pretty much part of the live team with Judah Brody. Uh, I help him with live interviews for a show. And I also help him broadcast games, like baseball games, uh, basketball games, uh, football games, etc. And yeah. Uh, I'm sometimes on Mimo Live, or I'm also on the camera. But I switched to Mimo Live recently, and now the person in charge of camera is uh, my good friend from tennis. He's right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Almost got hit by a ball ball last time going to Is it yeah. cellular, or is it, um, is it through the internet? It, it, you just need to have some sort of internet connection so he can be from like cellular or Wi-Fi, anything you want. So it can be Wi-Fi as well. Yeah. So right now I'm just asking him, tell us a crazy story about live stream. Uh, you should get the tech in a second. Yeah, so and, uh, to prove that it's live, we should have someone in the room make some questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. A crazy story about live stream? <laughs> <laughs> crazy story about live stream will probably be either the baseball game against the Royals one day when we had a live stream during the rain. Uh, it was really muddy. We had to cover our equipment with bags, uh, like the camera was covering the trash bags. Through the internet, through a telephone, and yeah, it just. The cameraman Santana slipped in the mud, fell. Who wants to ask Michael a question? Uh, for one minute. Another crazy question. <laughs> probably the Rugetti football. Any, any question? Uh, for this beautiful man. Like, <laughs> small space yeah, you can. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Is a hot dog a sandwich? I don't like that yeah. one. Is a hot dog a sandwich? It's a hot dog. Sure. <laughs> Is a hot dog Sandwich. <laughs> um, it's a hot dog. No, no, it's not a sandwich. I don't need a sandwich. Yeah. Oh, what's your favorite sport to live stream? Actually, for me or for him? Either one. I'll ask him and then I'll tell you mine after. <laughs> so yeah, Mimo Paul. I think he had a microphone. You can hear. You can hear you. Yeah, yeah I, I just, would just need to get on my phone and. Yeah, in contact with him. Football? Football because I was just on camera. Um, I was just get distracted by the plays and forget to record the game. So, yeah, space walk dude, just because of the graphic we use yeah. for the live. Yeah, you got a question? Oh, what is the plan on doing for college? Okay. What? Dude, don't forget monsters. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here, you guys want to throw them at them? Try to not get you asked else. a question? He did. Yeah. That'll be our last one, I, I think, over there. just because we got to get this moving along. Whoa! Good sense! We should be streaming you playing baseball. And, and, uh, but, but Michael can see our stream, so if you put him like in the corner, he would see that. So, for example, a really cool um, layer there is. Well, video I think that. of attending uh, SBCC for two years and then transferring to four year. Um, yeah, I'm just used to do enrollment credits I'm getting for being part of the community. So let's do that. And now he's um, he changed it. Just want to major in journalism. Just Mr. Dent has uh, been a big influence to me. And he's right back there. Mr. Dent. Mr. Dent. I want to continue. Continue doing what I do. Yeah. All right, so I just thank him for his time. We'll, we'll yeah, thank you guys. We'll hang up the Go EP. So yeah, there are, there are, he, he could definitely see us if we just 
go out in the contact room because we can hear um, and see our people. But I just did it really quick. So, so yeah, I'm going to go over Mimo Live a little bit slower because I, I kind of rushed through it. So you put in your sources. So literally, we just connected the camera and then it automatically recognizes that there's an HDMI. Two this question is for Mimo Live. Is it free FP software? No, or? it's unfortunately $200 a year is their base okay. price, but we got a 10 10 10% off code. You just, I mean, it's not a code. Just tell them that you're at our session and 10% off. So I mean, it's not nothing. So that's your product. Is that total cost $200 a year? Yeah. Um, for the for the student version, for, for the school <coughs> license, and then they have bigger ones with like quicker support and stuff, but we just use the school one, and it's, you can even do multiple things at the same time with different laptops. It's, it's $200 a year for the license, um, and technically you can only be using one uh, one laptop at a time. We've done it, we've been doing it. But we've done two before. <laughs> we've and done it's, it. And it's worked, <laughs> so. So you, you, you pick you pick your you have your sources in here. So then we, we would have a sideline cam. Um, for example, you want to pull up Mimo Reporter on my phone, and I'll I'll show that. So that would be a Mimo call. You can also use this app called Mimo Cam to plug in a lightning cable into your phone, and that will um, automatically go in. So I didn't do open. I meant to do new. So this is this is a baseball one with the score bug, and and then you sh you use shortcuts to turn things on and off. So I just press O to turn it all off. But right now we're just gonna make a new one. So blank, 30 frames per second, 720 HD per. So completely blank from scratch. It already so right now it's just a FaceTime camera because that can also be used as a source. And it kept all the sources from last time, which is really nice. I didn't even know it did that. So there's me. How about you guys? So, so oh, oh, this is a different window, my bad. There we go, there we go. So sources, just the FaceTime camera right now. So let's say we wanted to add that one. We would just press plus, video, and then it already knew that there was a different one. So HDMI you can capture. And then we need to put it in the layer stack to uh, actually have it um, be shown. So the quickest way is literally just drag it below. Um, another, I like the video switcher because it, it just is one layer, it's not cluttered, you can easily know what's going on and it just switches between one and the other. So we'll just use the video switcher with four sources right now. Because you can do nine, but I've never even had nine things try in one piece. So extra, but number one is the main camera. That's me. Number two is over here, as you can see, the HDMI. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit to set up. Oh, the camera's off. And then, like I said, there's a little record shortcut. I don't know if you can read it, but I'm just gonna hit under one, one, and then under three. So we hit three. And Cut to the third one. Probably has something selected. Yeah, that, that was my hand. And the watch. So, see? I don't know. Anyway, there's the layer stack, and then your output destination is how you decide where you want it to go. So, live streaming, YouTube. It's, the YouTube one is very easy. All you have to do is hook up your account through preferences and it all it, it's literally the push of a button it goes to YouTube and then for FHS it's just custom RTP server. Get your ingest server, get your stream key. And yeah, um it's it's, it's hard to go through and explain like in a, in a format like this, but if you go one on one like with uh, articles or I wrote an article, it's it's a lot. There's a lot more you can do. And here are four of the apps you can get for iOS. They unfortunately they're not big on Android <coughs> apparently, but so that one allows you to set up remotes to change the score, what it shows the score as, switch the cameras, anything you want. You can do it the remote one. That's that's this one. This is an NDI app, so it allows your phone to be an NDI camera. 
completely wireless, strong, really good zoom camera. Um, so one thing we did one time is we put a uh, like a fisheye lens on a camera on an iPhone, and then use that through Mimo Recorder, which is that red one right there, and that allows you to do a Mimo call. That's what Michael was doing basically. He was using the Mimo Recorder app, and you can even push your own graphics through that app if uh, they were to be doing an interview. They could just really quickly type in the lower thirds of that person's name. And then down there is um, Mimo Cam, and that's use lightning cable plug in here, and it uses your phone as a camera wired if uh, you don't have sta stable or internet connection or you don't want to overload your internet. Um, anyone ever seen anything like this before at school? It can really, really be a hassle in your live streaming. Anyone want to talk a little bit about that? And I'll yeah. with, with a um, short. So our school has strict, uh, well, it's the law, so all schools should have this, but our school strict, has a strict firewall. Um, it'll block things that it doesn't even think you need to block. Like one time we made a website um, for, uh, that said Ghost Public High School in it, and it blocked it because it thought it was a, uh, it was like a gambling site or something. I don't know. It's, it, it's um, like, but it also will sometimes interfere with NDI connections, RTMP connections, it really depends on your school and how their firewall is set up. Um, but uh, you can get around this pretty easily. Like on YouTube, you can't start the stream. Uh, our school blocks uh, YouTube unless it's from a teacher uh, teacher account uh, to start the stream. And our DP, News, our DP News YouTube channel, which is our uh, media program's YouTube channel, is not under a school uh, Gmail account. So it'll block all like it'll block all YouTube videos from that account. So to start the stream, we need to use this cool plugin called UltraSurf on Chrome. So if you're just in the Chrome browser, you can download, you can install this plugin. Uh, it's free and it's just a, it's just a, an easy to use VPN for the Chrome browser. So yeah, UltraSurf is awesome um, and it's easy, it's an easy way to get around school network blocks if that's a problem for your broadcast. Um, yeah, be, be a little bit careful with UltraSurf. You don't want it running all the time because it, 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 it makes new um, like UltraSurf browser windows. and um, it, it does work well for what, it, what you want it to do. Just be careful because it can end up in the long run slowing down your computer. But Not your computer. It just slows down your browser. If you keep it on, it just slows down it, it, if you're trying to download a large file. But if you're, uh, just turn it off when you're trying to download such, something large. Uh, fundraising. So if your program short on funds, there's a lot of opportunity to make some money for your program with a live stream. So some things that uh, come to mind are immediately are you can put ads on NFHS pages, sports channel media allows you to literally just put a little uh, the logo of whatever companies want to sponsor you in the corner and it'll circulate like every 15 seconds. So that's a really easy way to do it. You can even put their logos on your Nemo Live thing, like we have the DP News in the corner, you can put whatever you want there. Um, local businesses, it's always good to reach out to them, tell them what you're doing, how it's benefiting the community, who it's gonna reach. Um, and I really, um, I think something cool I've, we've been looking into, we haven't done it yet, is like a play of the game. So like McDonald's play of the game. And that'll, you show the play of the game and that's affiliated with McDonald's. And um, yeah, it, if you, you can always just say during a broadcast, like, hey, if you really like what you're doing and you want to support us, we're always in need of uh, funds to buy new equipment and keep our live streams going. So you can just go to our website and donate if you, every, every dollar counts. And like I said, NFHS is a great way to do it. Um, just be creative, really. There's like unlimited fundraising opportunities. You just got to get creative with it. Uh, I said this a little bit earlier, don't, dis don't get discouraged. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in live streaming, but it's okay because the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Um, you just you don't want to you don't want to get so discouraged that you stop doing it because then it's like you put all this time to building these graphics and templates. You just got to stick with it, learn from your mistakes. Tech, everything is a learning opportunity. Like when an adapter does, like one of the there's some random things. Like we have this adapter to plug in our ethernet cables and we would plug in like this right here to get our camera feed into there and it wouldn't work and we tried and tried and tried things and then all of a sudden someone plugged it into a different adapter and it started working so it's just 
Little things like that, a lot of troubleshooting, just pressing every button you can until something fixes the problem. I'm gonna write a short article on Mimo Live troubleshooting, just little tips and tricks we've learned along the way. So uh, stay tuned, I'll give you our website at the end. It has all of the content, all of the presentation we did today, if you wanna look back. Um, you're, what was the thing you said? You're gonna get complaints too. Um, so something, uh, something that's important that you make to clear to your viewers is that um, it, like you are, do, you're doing this as a service to the community. It's not, it's not necessarily a part of the school. Um, if someone pays, uh, like, it, yeah, if you're streaming, it's it's their choice to watch your stream. It, like you're not people, like you're not required to watch Fox uh, Fox Sports News. Uh, they're not requiring you to watch their uh, their sports games. So. You, you're providing this to the community. You're, you very well could get complaints, and that's okay. Um, everyone has their, is entitled to their own opinion, but um, just keep doing that, uh, keep working hard, and do and a good job. Another thing is, is if, if you're going through NFHS, um, they have to pay to watch it, and then they feel entitled to some better stream or something. It's like not what they imagined they would be paying for it. It's, Every, we're all just students. We're doing the best we can. We're putting in a lot of our own hours of our time into making these the best we can. So it's really just, you You just always want to be heartfelt and say, I'm sorry you feel that way. We're working hard to always adjust and make our things better and better. And don't listen to your critics, don't listen to your fans. That's the best piece of advice I can probably give you. So went over a lot. Everything's going to be on dpnews.org slash live. Um, there's my email at the bottom. Uh, if you have any questions, I know I said a lot of things, Mr. Dent. What's the minimum you can start with? The, the, program the very start basic with, minimum? The very minimum that they could start with using Nemo Live. We're using Nemo Live. So when we did baseball last year, it was literally me and then my co-commentator who didn't know anything about Nemo Live. I was on a computer hitting the S button for strikes, hitting the B button for balls, H for home, G for guest. I was just literally running the whole thing while commentating the game, while we just had a stationary camera on the roof of the dugout with sandbags on it. That's all it takes. Um, literally, I, I I've been thinking about it for a while, attempting to do a broadcast that's just all me. So I'm like, on the camera, I have a little phone or iPad right here to change the score button. I have the can laptop right here. So it's really like, Every, everything, you don't need a school fancy score bug. That's just something I like to do. You don't need all these graphics. All you need is a nice, uh, good angle so people can see what's going on in the game. And um, if you're interested in doing commentary, so I would give you guys some tips and I can definitely still do that. Um, it's, it's, it's a great way to get experience doing play-by-play -play or color commentary for the future if that's something you're interested in just really trying to improve your skills every time you go out there. Uh, yeah, um, you can literally just start with an HDMI camera, plug it into your computer, start streaming to YouTube. Literally your phone. <coughs> you don't even need a, a camera. Um, I just kind of showed you a lot of little intricacies you can do, take them to the next level whenever you're ready. Um, and my art, if you want to read them, my article, I think I put the link on that page. You know, I explained it a lot better. But yeah, so do we have any questions? And we'll, we'll do some questions before I talk about um, commentary, call, commentating. We also have a bunch of pretty good stories for you guys, but I want to make sure people get their questions across. <coughs> so I know people are reading. Yeah, and I'll give you a big email for further questions you ask. If it's, Relevant and a good question. Yeah. <laughs> did you make your graphics in that, uh, like the scoreboard graphics in the Mimo Live thing, or did you like make them on something else and then import them into the software? No, everything is, yeah, pull it up. So literally, uh, press the O button. So that, that's what I, that's a little bit, literally all I did was make the shortcut to turn the layer on and off O, and I did that for everything that applies here. So you just hit O, everything goes off and everything goes on. Um, that's just like a little tip you can do so you can. A really quick access to turn it off and on right there shortcuts so you literally all you have to do is hit a button on on the keyboard and it will 
do whatever you want it to. This Where did you design V8? Yeah, created so V8. That this, was the question. This, this is a combination of a bunch of different layers. Yeah. So, so there's all the text layers right here, and we have like the first exactly. like all the different kinds of types of the text it can be. Um, there's boxes and there's like if you're this two score box of colors, that's just the background box right there. It's just the background box right there. Um, the team name is right here with the color behind it, and it lets you if you go down here. So here's the home team names, that's this layer right here. Below it, you can change the margin, make it as big or small as you want. You can up and down. It, it, it's really easily customized. It only takes a few days to, um, not even a few days, you can spend a couple minutes every day, and I think you'll pick it up pretty quickly. Um, you can make graphics in Illustrator or Photoshop as well. Just add that as an image layer and just have transparency in your image, and then just use text layers as overlay. Or a countdown, oh, and then show the countdown too. Oh yeah, so I, I, there's a little countdown plot for you. I just made it to your mistake. Didn't know to make it too, but this is just a layer. You just put the format into percent days, percent uh, H, percent ASO. We got 277 days till 2020. It's gonna be a good year. My graduation year. Um, the analog clock. They even have implementation with like Twitter feeds, and um, you can search things on Twitter, Instagram, pull things from social media, so they make it super, super uh, convenient to just do anything anything you want. And like, for example, let's say I wanted to do this, how about? Judah, are you saying that you can have a Twitter feed that's automatically feeding into the bottom bar for them to see, or a sidebar <laughs> for them to see during the saying. game? I'll, I'll try to set it up right now. It, it, I just actually turned off the Twitter account. We just don't have our account linked right now. Be, um, but I'm, I'm gonna put all these online for you guys to download. Um, it'll be like the football one, the baseball one. Um, yeah, here's, here's the corner logo. It's just, you just gotta play around with the uh, each each layer to, to get what you want um, and customize them. And then like, like I said, there's those score layers where it's like programmed, all you gotta do is hit a button and it changes the score so that I, I use that to like change the ball count on a, the baseball game or change the uh, number of downs in, um, in, for a football game. So yeah, any other questions? And then I can also talk about social media because it's a pretty good, yeah. Do you know how to do slow-mo? Slow-mo. So there's instant replay and I'll show you guys really quickly how that works. Um, and when it instant replays, you can you can change the speed to I think like let's see, let's just look at it together. Um, let me switch up. Instant replay. So the instant replay one works is it records all the layers below it. So um, it's kind of like this is like the order in which what's on top of what. So if I move the scores behind there, you won't see them anymore. You can Command Z. A lot of the shortcuts work here. So you can put it right above the video switcher. Is this no, it's frozen? No, it's dead. 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 Well, how about this one? I got a memo call going. So I literally press join call. Very easy interface to use. Um, and then looks like it's working. So then we just got to change the video layer. Remember, so right here, it, it picks what, what source you want to be in the layer. So you want a memo. And there you guys are, you're a lovely bunch. I don't know why it's doing that weird shaky thing. The Wi-Fi I think it's I think it's a thing with like stabilization of the phone. Maybe it's what? Phone's do it. But yeah, um, hopefully Apple fix patches that soon. Oh, troubleshoot from Jiggle. See, you just gotta learn from your friend. Nice. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, all right. Just, all you have to do is shake the phone and then just make sure the phone stays still. Um. Okay. So is, it, is, is that is it, is it wrap up or is it two more question? All right. So last, last, last really quick thing: use your social media accounts for your schools to let people know when the games are happening because otherwise they can't watch. And just keep them updated, keep them flowing. Embed the players on your website to keep that as a home page, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Oh, that's what I thought. Right. That was like rushing along. Sorry, so like, yeah, that's gonna be DP News, Star Wars. I, what I like to do is so I just made so you guys so start live streaming. That's where I put all the resources that I came up with here today. Live coverage. Basically, it explains we go through the animation network and the game. I Great job, put a guys. Schedule yeah, a good team. Of all um, <coughs> things, but we, we don't have anything on the schedule right now because it's uh, pretty great. But our program uses Weebly to uh, connect our website, which is super easy. So, like anyone can hop on and like just start dragging in calendars, buttons, uh, YouTube, yeah, yeah. YouTube stuff. It's, it's just so easy. Yeah. So with uh, an embed link, all you got to do is drag the source code thing. Uh, it's just a thing with brackets usually, and that'll let you put in your players into any website you want. Um, because every single thing allows yeah. it that I show today. So like uh, YouTube, NFHS, everything makes it really easy. So I like to make it like a home page. I think it's uh, a good way to go. Social media, very important. Commentating. Just research the teams ahead of time. I forgot to bring my little binder, but have score cards in front of you to really quickly write down information for whatever sport it is. That way you can reference back, oh, in the third inning, uh, this dude hit a grand slam. I don't know how you would forget that, but you do. It's right there in front of you. Um, make sure if it's windy, you tape them down. Yeah, sorry. So on your replays, like let's say you're the tying grand slam or the walk-off play there at the end, mm -hmm. then you have that replay. Where does that replay archive to? Where can you go to get it back or play it? Like you're yeah. playing it in a different, like the next day and then out of the TriCaster or something like that. Where does it go to where you so, can get it? With file recording, I've been file recording for a while now. That saves everything you've been uh, streaming to the computer to any location you want. And then, so that's that way you have, you have that later. You did emergency SOS. Ben, things like that. Um, but yeah, file recording records everything. NFHS has an option to. Uh, record everything on demand, and then you can also get that email to you, the video file, if for some reason something goes up wrong within Nemo Live. Um, and what else? YouTube, everything will be saved in live streaming when you're on YouTube. It, the video will be available to watch afterwards. It, it's not like it goes away afterwards. Instant replay is more for like the people who are watching. I don't know why it's doing this, but anyway, I'll, I'll show you really quickly the, the But you'd have so to go back kind of, through to your recording of the game and go chop that part separately. It wouldn't just like save that clip. Like yeah, that. Um, Sports Channel Media, which I talked about earlier, they have within their media players and their website, which is called, um, it's on those papers, I can't remember all of them. But uh, they allow you to trim highlights and view them later, and it saves everything you do for uh, 90 days and then uh, you can you can you can download them and do everything you want. So, sports channel media is, uh, gives you a lot of ability to do that. NFHS has abilities to make highlights too. So, but they're, Nemo they're, Live does not store it as a separate file. Is what he's asking. Yeah. No, you would have to trim it individually okay. um, after recording the whole thing. Yeah. But the replay, um, you start the buffer. So you're yeah, gonna make it live by starting the buffer. It shows you. Should be started and then start the instant replay. It replays the last, right now it's set to five seconds. <laughs> and it gives you a little replay indicator and you can change that to whatever you want so people know it's replay. Um, so for example, let's start the buffering, record me, and I'll, uh, Nick, you gotta be ready to hit the stop as soon as something cool happens, all right? So, <laughs> I hit the whip. So now, uh, if, you want, if, you want to hit, if you want to see the whip again, you hit start the replay. Oh, you wait, see, you gotta be really quick about it. And this is why I recommend using a remote so the person can literally see the play happen. Stop. Yeah. So do y'all not, like, on this, is there a way to do, like, a live replay? So why do, why are you still listening to the game? Can you not go back and replay that, what you just watched? Um, so it, it only stores one thing at a time, unfortunately, and I've, I've experienced, I've, I've, so like after you show that one, 
and then you start the buffer again, it will overwrite it with the current stuff that's happening. I haven't experienced, I haven't tried using multiple instant replay layers to like just keep, keep them going. I don't know if they would interfere with each other or if it would be too much for the system to handle. It, that, that's something for you to experiment, experiment with. You would, could you hook your second computer up so that you can have a replay there and just use that as a source going back in if you yes. want to keep those replays? You've done that. Where we've had the computer. camera or another thing as another source. Oh, yeah. yeah and then yeah. you just so, do the so instant replay, replay from, the instant instant replay so, from another source done, instead of. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Something, what we did was we, we would like hook up a lightning phone to the computer through through like a lightning cord. Right. The iPhone <laughs> with the Mimo Cam app. We had a lens on it so we could get a really good view of the game. And then we were just recording with a, like the, the camera app. And then we would make the source the phone and we could just play the video and show that. So that's yeah. that's like the work around the computer or another yeah. device. Yeah. Yeah. The whole time. Basically, yeah, like if it's and on half time, time, you can yeah, you can stop the buffer. Yeah. Um it only lets you go up to ten seconds. I think for like a certain it's just like a RAM thing yeah. with the computer, but it, it lets you buffer for up to ten seconds and it just keeps like the most recent ten seconds until you get stopped. Okay. So yeah, instant replay is a really cool layer. Some of the other ones, like there's lower thirds, so I made L lower thirds. So if the camera was on me and my commentating buddy, it just shows our names and our tags. So that's a good one. Um, what else? There's there's really so many layers. You got to figure out what works for you. So fastball scorekeeper is the one that I use to like make all these numbers constantly be able to flip um, and add on to them. Yeah. Do you have time? Can you guys set up, do a quick comment? Can you set up your mic? Do you have one? Oh, uh, the mini USB. USB. That's, mini USB. That's another uh, thing that I that I forgot to put on my PowerPoint. It's, it's pretty easy. So uh, in your sources, you're going to click the plus button. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's the audio source right here. Mm -hmm. And similar to how with the camera source, it'll take any <coughs> it'll take any video Wait, source you, from your phone. It's, it's fine. And it's once you have your USB microphone plugged in, or um, if you have a USB to XLR here. adapter, or something like that, uh, then you can take the uh, then you can take the audio source. Here, here's the audio only layer. So I would I, I would just add a new one, audio only. And um, right now the this Mimo call is giving it the uh, audio feed. So I'll change that to Mimo call, and then it would just instead of Mimo call, it would be whatever you set it to. So camera audio. If that was uh, not dead, you make it live. 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> oh, you can see that too, though. What? I think you can see that. Um, but that's how you do that. So let's just. You said you wanted an example, so we'll mute this. Is there? A, is, no. no. <laughs> Yeah, once you plug in your USB mic, so let's 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 pretend connect it with the source. They are going to be the commentator, audio only layer. And well, we were going to bring up. Uh, you have like a splitter. You could call it multiple. So um, what you so could, here, if you had uh, like a little USB soundboard, and the soundboard was going in, then you could have. We have one of those. It's a little USB a soundboard that connects to the computer via USB. You could have the soundboard as an input and control four, uh, four however many mics you want with that soundboard. And, and that would be an easy way to do it. Yeah, there's another. No, I was just going to show um, there, there's even a built in audio mixer in Nemo Live. So um, I, it's this one. You, It's an output destination, audio aux. It's also like if you're not connected to an aux, it'll just say like audio monitor, I think. And then program new audio mix, and you literally pick which audio you want to be what volume. And right now it just isn't registering a lot of them because we don't have anything in there. But you pick the volume, set the gains, and then you can have different mixes for different scenarios. So all of a sudden the camera's on your commentator, and you want to dole down the uh, all the all the noise from the game. You can do that. If you want to turn off the Commentator completely, you can do that. Is anyone <coughs> on anything in Mimo Live? Yeah, I, uh, yeah we can explain a, lot of, a little better. This is like, you don't, you don't, but this isn't coincide with like a teleprompter software. That would be, they would, they would stay separate always mm -hmm. if you're following your anchors. Yeah, so you, could, you could use the Serrano Morning Broadcast as well. Um, so we have a separate switching stop that we use, uh, Livestream Studio or TriCaster. 
Um, that's what you can use to switch show, but you can also switch a show if you have enough um, of these HDMI adapters, mm -hmm. it, it, it'll technically take as many as you as many USB ports as you have, but um, sometimes that can be too much for the CPU to handle. So we've done up to two or three, what is usually fine. Um, but yeah, as, ma as many cameras as you have, you can switch between them with the switcher layer. Um, you can add, you could input mics using a USB soundboard. Uh, there, you can use Mimo Live as a as a switcher for your morning broadcast show as well if you wanted to do that. And then about like commentary, if you guys are interested in doing your own play by play and stuff, I just honestly, I think the best piece of advice I can give you is fake it till you make it. Just keep going out there, keep trying, keep working hard at mastering your craft and learning, always learn new things about the games, talk to people, see what advice they have. And you just got to just keep going, watch a lot of football, watch a lot of baseball, whatever, whatever you want to, whatever you want your, um, your specialty to be, just, just work hard at it, study. And uh, so you can become the best at what you do. What else? Um, there's a lot of like crazy stories we have. Oh, yeah, go ahead. You pretty much have your entire team out in the field, like they're all there. That was something I, I, I meant to, unfortunately we don't have a lot of pictures of like our setup. That's what I wish I did, but I can try to show you like through this picture. So here's our commentators. He's got a little laptop um, with some stats of the game on it so we can really quickly reference to that and um, just be like, oh, he's he has 300 running yards this year, whatever. Um, I think that's Nick on Mimo Live. Yeah. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of stuff. So this was one we actually put a lens on the camera that's connected through lightning um, to record the game and we could use that for replay. That was something we were experimenting with. There, usually we were doing two HDMIs with two of those, so two of those adapters, two HDMI going up to the roof cams uh, through the window. You just got to make sure they're long enough because they were like really, really taut and like barely like, 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 like there. Like it was really, really tight. But um, there you see the microphone plugged in. We got our adapters for our computer. Um, and then what you can't see is right next to Nick. There's uh, there's probably like Isa who was here a second ago. Or, I don't know. DEG did one one time. A lot of our team is here. You just you just ask around your class and be like, who wants to help me do some sports? It's really easy. We'll show you all you need to do. And hopefully you get some people to say yes. But you did a uh, world-class baseball uh, broadcast in the playoffs with two people? Three people. Um, no, yeah. The, the one we did with the Grand Slam went on latimes.com. It went on. Uh, KEYT used our footage of the Grand Slam, which was which is our local like uh, news station, and that was like felt really good to do that. And there was three of us, I think. Maybe it was like I think it was me, my 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 co-commentator who was from China and didn't know anything about baseball, and he said that we just win. Perfect. He walked it off, and we have Charger players on all the bases, and I was like, but. But um, it was literally just me and him. We had a camera on the roof, and we got like 200, 300 viewers on YouTube. And we were just, it was like the second time we'd ever done it. And it was like, what the heck? Like, we just started this, and it's already like blowing up. But um, yeah, that was, that was a really fun experience. Um, but yeah, next to Nick is Isa, who just walked in probably on an iPad, changing the scores of the game. And then behind us is somebody switching the cameras with an iPad. That's all done with Nemo Remote, which is, it's really user friendly and it's, it's just a drag and drop interface onto these buttons. You can make the buttons do whatever you want. You can even make the buttons do like multiple things. So turn everything off, start the stream, um, turn off the score bug. Yeah, I mean, does anyone else have any questions? Do you, uh, have you had like live uh, reporters do like mid-game interviews or post-game interviews like out on the field that you could switch to like after commentating a bit? So the best way to do that would be with Nemo Reporter. Yeah. And we didn't really start using that too much until after like our football season was over. But it's definitely doable. I've, I've really wanted to do it for a while now. The sideline reporters, it's definitely something that's doable. Um, you just got to make sure you've got a strong internet connection so it looks good and um, you get a nice whatever uh, mount for your phone so it's not all shaky, but definitely doable.
Any other questions? And if I didn't give anyone media monsters, I'm happy to. Um, so you said that you can link the Yeah, so it's literally, yeah, pull back up email live. There's literally, uh, it's just the Twitter layer. Um, so on the Twitter layer. Show them, yeah, so just click the drop down on, on, um, on the, 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 the next one, the next one. You don't need to set that right now. But yeah, you, you just add your Twitter account, and then once you've signed in. Under type, so you can either do the drop down menu, you can do my timeline, mentions, favorites, and search. So this way you can make sure um, everything you want is like clean, so that's why like favorites, you just favorite whatever you want to go up, and it'll go up. And unfortunately, like when I was experimenting with it, but this was a couple months ago, I couldn't get the favorites one to work. I got the other three to work, but I mean, they're constantly updating Nemo Live. That's one of my favorite things is um, like almost, like sometimes I'll just open the app and there's an update and I'm like, wow, and it has lots of features like instant replay. That only came out a, a few months ago and I was really excited when that was out. So the mentions, they just automatically pop up or do you like click the um, for the mentions one, it, it just automatically goes through them. Um, that's why the favorites one is, that's what they recommend. So you can screen whatever, you, uh, make sure not, no inappropriate content or gets on there. So you're the one screening it and favoriting them on, on a, another device or something. Anything else? Yeah. So you can see the possibility is more than one camera that's not like hooked up. So you can have different angles of the game and you can just switch between them. Yeah, so um, with Nemo Call, you, I'm, I'm, I'm like almost 100% sure you can have multiple Nemo Calls running at the same time. You can yeah, test it right now. We've done it before. We had like two side, like, like for example, for basketball, we had uh, a Nemo Call on every, at each end of it, so it goes like uh, both feet, and then you can always switch between the crew, like wherever the action is. Nemo Cam is more stable though if you are close enough to your computer, like if you had a six foot lightning cable or something like that. Um, a Nemo Cam, we've had more six, we've had more luck with a Nemo Cam, which is just when it's a uh, lightning cable plugged in, uh, plugged straight into the computer. And that's just because it's a, a, a wired hard connection um, instead of internet, which can always drop <coughs> out and do unexpected things wire, uh, wirelessly. But um, Nemo Call is pretty reliable. We've done a lot of things with it. Um, yeah. Anything else? Can you get one from Jake? Oh, that wasn't very good. Um, yes. Can you interface this with like Livestream Studio or Black Magic System? Yeah, or that's um. No, just so use this as a in the output monitor. Uh, press plus, I think. Up here, it has support with Black Magic Design, NDI, which uh, is how we put it into Livestream. So uh, our school. If you send an NDI source and connect it to your school's network. Um, your uh, live stream studio switcher or your uh, TriCaster or Blackmagic should all be able to receive an NDI source. And um, like if you're on the football field and there's Ethernet on your football field, you could be switching the game. And in your studio, you could have that set to your school's TV channel, receiving it through NDI. Um, and you could also output just to an HDMI connection. Um, that would also work and have that go to your switcher. If you had an HDMI input on your switcher, and you, uh, there's a lot of different ways you could do that. Good question. <laughs> on the bounce. bounce. Nice. <laughs> uh, anybody else on literally anything related to any of this? Yes. <laughs> That's the craziest, craziest experience of life. Well, the best one was when that that game time grand slam against the seventh ranked baseball team in the nation happened. That was that was just endorphins and everything was ready to survive, but like the craziest. Yeah. Well, can you actually explain what happened with that game tying Grand Slam? Yeah, can I'll, you give us a... For sure, for sure. I'll, I'll even pull up. I, I pulled it up as people were walking in, but how about while I do that, Jacob, tell them what you, what you were going to say. Okay, so I actually have a story that was terrifying. Uh, I don't know if anyone is here from one of the away games. I think it was the Rigetti away, away game. Were oh, you with us? It. It, was, it was the away game that you weren't there with us. Okay. Um, it might have been saying this. Yes. Uh, I locked my keys in my car. <laughs> <laughs> and um, luckily, I, uh, I uh, have an alternate means of opening my car. But um, I, yeah, that was a, that was a very uh, scary moment. I, I was filming on the, on the roof of our baseball field's dugout. 
and it's just it's just like a tin chicken coops esque roof, uh, and it started sprinkling a little bit, and I was I, I was wearing flip flops, and I, was, I slipped and I fell forward on my stomach. I thought I was gonna fall off the roof. But I did it. I did it. One That's, That's, That's why we're not allowed on the roof. Exactly. Here, Nick. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, we have one one football game. That wasn't all too fun. <laughs> Jacob and I weren't responsible for getting all the equipment, and we forgot the laptop. <laughs> More or less the most important thing. And then, so that was a hassle. And then there was also this lady there we've never seen before at our, I guess, home football oh, field. That game, it was an away game, but it, we were still at the same stadium that we were playing. Yeah, and this lady came up and was like, oh, you can't film from our roof. And she was like, the roof's gonna break down. She was screaming at us, and like we did it anyway. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that was. I think. For sure. Worst so, story. Why not? Go for it. So my story is when it was raining and there was a baseball game. So we had to take a tarp out and everything, and we put a bag over the camera. I would, and they were like, "Oh, we need somebody up the, on the dugout for the cameraman." So I went up there and I was so scared because it was raining and it was like slippery. <laughs> so I was like that the whole time and it was really cold. And so one of the players that were, was pitching, he hit the ball so hard that it went over my head and it landed in the pool. And I got so scared because I thought it was gonna hit me. There were like three times like so that. So if you start if you start live streaming sports, you'll have plenty of fun stories like this. Just, like every time you go out, crazy stuff happens. It's stuff that you never thought would happen happens. Um, but this baseball one, our our team is a Division One baseball team in, in Southern California, so it's one of the best. And they they made the playoffs, and it's the second round. And, we were matched up, they were matched up against the seventh best team in the nation, and it was the second ranked team in California, like according to Max Preps, and they're down 5-1 in the seventh inning, which is the final inning, and the base is loaded, and this dude, oh, well, I don't know what the audio is. Oh, that, that would make sense. And I was commentating it. And then, and then in the in extra inning, I know uh, this is the microphone that is responsible for all that peaking, and it's like that's just gonna happen. Um, I would highly recommend getting a really nice wind sleeve because wind will really <laughs> disrupt your audio and make it not nice to hear at all. Like at this game right here, it was an away game, the first away game we did. Uh, we hitched a ride with one of the players' moms, me and Ben, and um, my co-commentator. I was going like that to try to prevent the win, because she was trying to talk, and it was stupid. Yeah. So windy. So definitely a, a nice wind sleeve, um, dead cat, any sort of thing like that. A dead cat is a, is a fur wind sleeve. It's not a real dead cat. Um, do you have any other? Yeah. Do you guys do the cross games? We've been asked to do lacrosse games. We haven't done them yet. I just haven't moseyed on down there. I had a lot of things to do, but we're looking to expand to that next. It's pretty similar to, to football. And like the way you do it is we get high up, um, get a camera, uh, just follow the action, get a, like how, how many, that, that camera back there is one we use a lot. How, how many times zoom is it? It's like, oh, it's crazy. Yeah. It's got like eight times time time zoom. Time. So if you can get something like that for sports like football or soccer or, um, Lacrosse, where it's so, uh, it's so, just so there's so much happening like all over. Zoom is really helpful there.